I did the best intro of my life and I was muted the whole time. That was weird. I'm having to have me a good day today, you guys. Am I back? I think I'm back. I don't know what happened. My my internet disconnect. I am um very embarrassed. Rewind, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Okay, let's start over. Let's start over. Hi everyone, thanks for being here today and joining me for Infinite Hope because as we all know, the world is filled with negative news and we need some positivity to balance it out. That's what I do on this show. I do Infinite Hope so that I can share positive news with you guys and uh, balance out the vibes here. Um, that's what we do on the channel on Fridays. And uh, before I before I get into everything, please make sure to smash that like, hit that subscribe button and all that good stuff. Share the stream or the highlights if you're watching the highlights after, because uh, that's what I do. I make highlights of this show for people who can't catch the live stream. Um, but yeah, so. Dinosaur em embryo discovery helps crack baby Tyrannosaur mystery. Ooh. Oh, look how cute it is. It's not that cute because it's vicious. Apparently, it's one of those predators. Uh, it will eat you. Uh, they are among the largest predators ever to walk the earth, but experts have discovered that some baby Tyrannosaurs were only the size of a border collie dog when they took their first step. The first known fossils of Tyrannosaurus embryos have shed light on the early development of the colossal animals, which could grow to 40 feet in length and weigh eight tons. Um, so these, here's the, um, the dudes, uh, kind of like Ross and um, and friends. Well, I mean, he wishes he was on these sites. He just worked at a museum. But the um, paleontologist dudes, uh, you know, going through going through these kind of stuff. This is their dream come true. Finding the these kind of discoveries. Again, all the links are down below. We also had another um, dinosaur bit of news. Here it is. Uh, dinosaur fossils could belong to the world's largest ever creature. Look at this massive finding. Like this is this is a pretty big deal. Um, so experts have uncovered the remains of a gigantic dinosaur in Argentina and believe it could be one of the largest creatures to have ever walked the earth. And so this is uh, kind of like a picture of one. It's a huge dinosaur. Yeah. It, yeah, come on now, it's like this is this is a big deal. This is a big, this is a big find. So um, I mean, this is kind of cool. I think uh, we got some more fossils and stuff. And oh wait, that's related articles. That's not, never mind, never mind. But yeah, so I'm gonna link this all down below so you guys can check that out. That's really cool. Can't imagine digging that kind of stuff up for the first time and seeing that live would be a like. So cool. Um, okay, so moving on to different, uh, more discoveries being made. Again, I'm not gonna focus too much on this, but I thought it was cool. Uh, 6,500 medieval coins and rare gold rings on Earth in Polish cornfield. Uh, here's a picture of it. Uh, the article basically gets into is that this this archaeologist dude went there to um, you know ask information about this other stash that was discovered a few years back, and um, some priest talked to him and basically gave him the lowdown about another rumored treasure, and so he went there and started to like look for it with a the metal uh, metal detectors and he found it he found the giant stash and uh yeah that was it and this is some of the rings and they're trying to like speculate about you know uh who it belonged to and everything like that and yeah so that was cool i thought that uh, again thank you kai for sending me that article i thought that was a cool find um, and this one is under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. Um, trove of ancient treasures found in shipwreck off the coast of Greece. Uh, so these divers found a bunch of cool stuff. Researchers surveying the seabed surrounding the island of Kassos uh, uh, discovered pottery that could hold clues to trade in the Mediterranean. So, I mean, how cool is this guy's job, man? A lot of cool discoveries being made, you guys. Everything is not always negative. Look at these people. Look at this is this is these people's job. Like this this person goes and like you know looks for cool stuff under the ocean. I mean that is so cool. Look at there's pottery. 
so cool. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous at all. Some of the stuff they've found. Yeah. Cool stuff, right? There's another bit of scientific news I wanted to share with you guys because I thought this was fascinating. Like, and I mean fascinating. And once again, thank you so much, Kai, for sending me this. Uh, he said, it says, the article says, a substance found in Antarctic ice may solve a Martian mystery. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, researchers have discovered a common Martian mineral deep within ice ore from Antarctica. The finds suggest the minerals, a brittle yellow-brown substance known as jarosite, was forged the same way on both Earth and Mars from dust trapped within ancient ice deposit deposits. It also reveals how important these glaciers were on the red planet. Not only did they uh, carve valleys, the researchers say, but they also helped create the very stuff Mars is made of. So this is really cool stuff for me because I, uh, I'm i also a, a, an advocate of uh, ice age cycles. Um, I'm not a global warming person. I believe in climate change, but I actually do believe uh, more in the whole ice age cycle. Um, and there's a there's a book called uh, The Cosmic Winter by Wick Victor Klub. So if you're interested in the, uh, you know, the, the cosmic cycle and what happens when ice ages hit and how, uh, you know, uh, that's most likely what's happening with our environment right now. It's kind of like the, the, the time, uh, you know, I, I highly suggest you guys read that book. Uh, again, it's called uh, the, mm, uh, the, Cos the Cosmic Winter. Uh, so yeah, um, and, and, and I thought this was really fascinating because again, I've read, uh, I've read a lot of articles and stuff like that or about um, Mars's past and history and the fact that they may have had water on there and you know uh, that it may have evaporated and come to earth and uh, you know all sorts of cool stuff and it kind of like really puts your mind out there especially if you're a writer um, and you and you want you know uh, if you want ideas and stuff like that uh look no further than some you know cool scientific articles because then uh you know it, it just kind of gets your gets your juices going with your imagination you can uh, you can you know write about really cool stuff and theories and despite what some naysayers have to say about humans we do sometimes do good things um and this is one of those times when a little boy, look how cute he is, a little boy stuffed Bambi was rescued from frozen canal. They didn't think people would care, but they did. Um, so this is the story here. Everyone knows Santa's favorite red-nosed reindeer knows how to fly. Unfortunately, his name's a namesake, Rudolph, a beloved stuffed toy uh, fawn belonging to four-year-old Nico, uh, did not. The stuffed deer, uh, heroically rescued by the NCC uh, Skateway team, has now been reunited with its best friends. Smiles all around, and there they are, super happy. And there he is with his little stuffy toy. In a world ripe with so many negatives, it can be easy to lose sight of the positive ones. Sometimes it takes focusing on small acts of kindness to put things in perspective. And this could not agree with more and that's why i do this show because i want to focus even on the smallest little detail of niceties or niceness because we've lost touch like i really feel like humans have lost touch with how good we can be you just have to ask is basically the line here uh people do care assuming that they don't is something that adults do it's true, we do. Um, we become pessimistic and then we, you know, don't believe in the goodness of people anymore. In the kindness of strangers. Um, my kids are growing up knowing that other people have our backs and other people care and that's really heartwarming. The stuffed baby deer isn't the only thing melting. A watcher named Monica Ward seconded from her perch in the Twitterverse, so is my cold, cold heart. <laughs> well, just follow us under, I'm not crying, you're crying, shall we? Yeah, uh, we, we shall because this was freaking sweet. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh, okay. But yeah, so that was that was cool. I thought it was a cool story. I heard about this story a while ago, um, and I thought it was a really cool story, but I didn't want to share it yet because I wanted to see what happens with it. Because I, I, I had read that the city of Toronto was not happy about this, and they were actually removing the tiny houses. Uh, so people living in Toronto's banned tiny shelters share how they've changed their lives. Uh, yeah, like I said, Toronto's uh, city uh, council and stuff were not happy with these tiny houses, um, which is ridiculous. Like, I mean, this is one of those things where I'm like, are you kidding me right now? These people are helping people. Like, get off your high horses. Um, Khalil Sayward has been making tiny insulated shelters for those experiencing homelessness in Toronto for months now. The two by six structures that are made with the same standard insulation you'd have in your house and come com uh, complete with a smoke and carbon monoxide detector and a fire extinguisher in each have been met with plenty of support and over 200k in donations. That's amazing. While there's been pushback from the city of Toronto, which banned the structures from the city property and even removed some, uh, Saves Right says the majority of them are still being used by people. A recent video made by Saves Right with the help from the team creating a documentary on the Toronto tiny, tiny shelters helps give an idea of how they're really helping and shares testimonials from those living in them. Um, and basically, like, I mean, you get you get the, the gist. It's really helping people. Um, but like, I mean, I was shocked that they, like the city wanted to get rid of them. Like, I mean, that's just crazy. Uh, why are you being like that? You know, it just makes no sense to me. Uh, so this is the guy that started it. Uh, a Toronto carpenter is building insulated mini shelters for homeless people. Uh, this this man, uh, he's a hero. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, there's good people doing good stuff. Like this is this is a good thing. I don't understand why sometimes powers that be. I mean, well, I should understand. They're psychos, but <sighs> you know how it is. At least at least these people are doing something good. These these people are doing something good. All right, we're gonna talk about our main story for today, which is um, this dude right here, which I, I I wasn't familiar with because I'm not a huge UFC person, so I didn't know who he was until today. Um, and I uh, I'm I'm really glad I know him now. Uh, UFC champ Dustin Poirier. Uh, career, I, I hope I said that right, is giving back, raising thousands for kids in need and inspiring other fighters. He just reached the number one in the UFC lightweight rankings after knocking out famed mixed martial artist Conor McGregor. Oh God, this dude. I know, I know that guy. Um, over the weekend, but Dustin Poirier is also a number one in the hearts of kids and their parents in Lafayette, Louisiana. When the 32-year-old former interim UFC lightweight champion wanted to give back to his hometown, he and his high school sweetheart turned wife Jolie only had to travel to his closet for inspiration. Um, they began auctioning off the shorts, jackets, and wraps that Poirier um, used in dozens of story, story fights selling the memorabilia through a new nonprofit called The Good Fight uh, dedicated to helping undeserved communities in their local Acadania region. The founder has raised thousands of dollars since 2018 to impact others, including the young family fallen L LPD officer, Michael Middlebrook, and disabled children who didn't have a playground. And I think there's a video of that. Um, there's There they are, the Good Fight team. So we're gonna watch the video here. Oh, that's awesome. What a cool guy. Um, that was really cool. I, I really like him now. <laughs> I'm not a huge like fan of UFC, but I'm a fan of people who do good things. And this guy has done good things. And that is to be commended. It always is because, you know, uh, like I said, we don't, we don't really focus on the positive, uh, all that much. Um, another community helping each other. Um, 
which is always a good thing. Always. Uh, so then we have uh, community pulls together to restore house so 94 year old World War II vet can go home. Uh, Alfred Guerra is 94 years old, the decorated World War II veteran who was awarded both the Bronze Star and a Purple Heart for acts of bravery never faltered when it came to doing his duty for his country. When Guerra recently found himself in times of need, his San Antonio community stepped up to do their duty by him. Uh, so these are the, the folks that are helping him out. There he is. Um, while his family tried to keep a handle on the various repairs and maintenance projects for Guerra, after his son passed away, the home he shared with his late wife became uninhabitable. Hoping to harness the power of social media, his daughter Maria reached out via Facebook to ask for help. There is also a video, so we'll check that out. Um, and that is right here. New at six, an encouraging update. Last fall, we told you about Alfred Guetta, the 94-year-old veteran who earned both the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart in World War II fighting in the Pacific. After a family member posted on Facebook that his home had fallen into disrepair, it seemed that help was on the way, but then things got hung up due to the pandemic. That is until now. Jesse Degollado shows us what's been done over the last several days. The crew putting a new roof on this West Side home actually was doing more than that. It's a mission of mercy, says the daughter of a soon to be 95 year old decorated World War II veteran, Aww. Alfred Guerra. It's heartwarming and it's very overwhelming to see so much help. Help, she says, that she didn't realize was out there. Fred Alvarado with Broken Warriors Angels. It's veterans helping veterans. Purple Heart recipients like Tony Roman. The least we can do is uh, make sure that he has a comfortable home to live. Companies like the roofers who didn't stop until it was done. Our business statement is is to give back, so it's, it's just a great opportunity. Over the weekend, more than a dozen veterans of three wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam, gutted the interior ahead of the electrical and plumbing work still to come. Alfred Guerra's daughter says her father was so eager to come back to his home, he even tried moving out of her house before the work was done. He says, I'm going to go home. Now, you can't go home. There's no walls. And he goes, I'll pitch a tent if I have to. I don't Aww. care. And I'm like, no, 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 we can't let you do that. I said, can't do that. Not at least for another month or so. Roman says they just need a company to hopefully donate central heating and air. It may still be a work in progress, and Alfred Guerra's memory may not be what it once was. Well, I'll never forget what you did for me. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Oh, isn't that so sweet, you guys? So, yeah, like they helped him and they're building his house. Um, so, yeah, uh, let me just see. Well, thanks for sticking around for those of you who did. Uh, that's it for the show this week. Thank you guys, everyone, for joining me. Please make sure to smash that like. And if you're watching the highlights, smash the like, share the stream and all that good stuff. And make sure you uh, press the subscribe button and join me here again next Friday for your next episode of Infinite Health. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.